Hello. You and we can see you. Okay, that's good. I'm here. Hello. Speaking from Oxford. Yes, and we can see your presentation. And once you're ready to start, you can go. Oh, I can't see my presentation. I will we'll try to... Ah, there it, it is. Out. Now I can see it. Now Excellent. I can see it. Very good. Now I can start. Hello. So I'm going to talk about um, diagrammatic quantum reasoning and how something very childish looking actually leads to something that's becoming increasingly practical and one of the most promising things now in quantum technology. So as I was said, I was a professor at the Oxford University for some 20 years. Uh, not there anymore. I moved to Quantinium as a chief scientist. And the story started kind of a, a long time ago when I was still at Oxford uh, in 2005 when I published the paper Kindergarten Quantum Mechanics. So the idea was whether quantum, uh, quantum could be turned entirely in sort of uh, childish looking pictures um, just to make it more inclusive and more accept, uh, acceptable to a much broader kind of uh, audience. In the beginning, it was very naive. But then if you go 30 years later, uh, you can I about this in this book, which is uh, everything you need to know about quantum theory and quantum computing and also quantum foundations entirely in those terms. And it also teaches you how to use those terms. Now, this book is still university level. Now, five years later, <coughs> and uh, soon, like in a month or two, this book will be coming out. And this is supposed to be a broad audience book that explains the same story. Uh, uh, we're also doing a, a series of uh, films, YouTube videos to else, also help people, uh, a broad class of people, teenagers, everybody who wants to learn about quantum to learn it there uh, in the same way. Uh, I'm just going to go very briefly through the sort of idea of how these things work. So basically the way to think uh, is, is of like something like here, a battery and a light bulb and a wire in the middle as some boxes, which are the, uh, the, the battery and the light bulb and a wire in between. Now you can represent these a little bit more abstract. Uh, can represent this a little bit more abstract by literally representing the, 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 the boxes by a box and the wires by wire. It's a very straightforward thing to do, obviously. Uh, then you can start composing these boxes, like uh, in flowcharts and all that. But very soon, some miracles start to happen. So if you, for example, have this sort of, yeah, you've got a wire on the left, which is a little bit bent. You've got a wire on the right, which is not bent at all. You see uh, there's a cap-shaped thing on top. There's a cup-shaped thing at the bottom. And if we interpret these as boxes, like things you can produce in a laboratory or in a computer, then this simple trivial picture, and that was an insight, that was the insight I got like in 2004, 2005, basically gives you quantum teleportation. To understand in a basic level quantum teleportation, you need nothing more than the understanding that like you can have a, a banded wire and then you can yank it. So it, it's something you can explain very simple to, uh, to a lot of people and that had a little bit of traction at the time, but it was only one simple example and didn't sort of wasn't didn't give you a substitute for the traditional quantum mechanical formalism. So we had to work a little bit harder. And uh, now I'm going to talk about a concept of spiders. And that's basically all you need. And spiders are a generalization of the idea of a wire. So what can you say about a wire? A wire is something that has two endpoints, two endpoints. That's a wire. And if you. So if you stick two wires together, then you just get another wire. If you glue two, the two endpoints of two wires together, you just get another wire. And so that's a kind of essential principle of wires, you could say. And now we try to generalize that. And we did this by means of the concept of a spider. So here you see a spider. And what's, what's the point about a spider is, is, is if you glue two spiders together, you get another spider. They fuse together. Think of it as fusing together. You have to do a little bit of counting here about the remaining number of legs, but the principle is still very simple. You can glue them together. To make things more interesting, we assume that there are two colors of spiders. Now, if two spiders of different color meet each other, they're not gonna fuse. Actually, they lose the legs which they hold each other with. But this has to be two legs. This has to be an even number. Now, okay, so I taught you a few silly cartoons, and now we're going to go straight to quantum circuits. 
and I'm going to help you simplifying a company. It's not a very complicated, a complicated quantum circuit using spiders. For example, here is a circuit. So all this, so all the 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 horizontal wires connecting a red and a green dot. That's a synop gate. <coughs> so we got a configuration here of three synop gates, and now we're going to use our spiders to simplify it. Basically, we see a bunch of green spiders on the second wire, which can fuse together. We see a bunch of red spiders on the first wire, which can fuse together. Now you get this. Up, and now you see two wires between a green and a red spider, so they go away. And a, a single red spider on a wire, that's just a wire, because red spiders were a generalization, spiders were a generalization of wires. So we actually simplified our initial circuit, this one, to uh, this one, to this one. As, as it turns out, today, the best technique for simplifying very complicated quantum circuits is this. This is the state of the art. These, these simple pictures, they actually do better than any other technique for optimization quantum circuits. And this is one of the, the new, many developing applications of these pictures. And so let me go to my next slide. Okay, that's the one I want. So this is currently all the companies in the world who are using these like simple pictures I was presenting in one way or another in our, for, for quantum applications. So it's a, it's a fastly growing list. And these are the ones I know about. I don't know about all of them. <coughs> and this is because we have direct collaborations with each of them on the subject. So these childish pictures have become quite prominent. Now, in the remaining time, I want to speak about one particular application. Uh, back in 2005, when I was presenting these pictures at McGill in Montreal, at a, at a seminar, uh, one of the world top uh, linguists was in the audience, like the person who came up with a theory of grammar. So after I presented teleportation in that way, the person said, Bob, this is grammar. Uh, in fact, a few years later, a few years, I knew nothing about linguistics at the time. A few, year later, a few, a few year la years later, in the department of Oxford, there were actually two colleagues. One knew about grammar mathematics. That's the mathematics of grammatical structure. And one knew about meaning mathematics. That's what now is everywhere used in uh, all kinds of machine learning and deep learning, representing meanings by vectors. And there was a big open problem, how to combine the two. Now, the solution was already given by Lambeck when he recognized that the quantum formalism can, of course, encode vectors, because that's what it's all about, but also can encode grammar. So he produced, we produced that paper at the time, here's my, here's my clicker, um, which was a, a way of combining meaning and grammar in one formalism. Uh, but it was a quantum model. And like Feynman said, if you got a quantum model, you better put it on a quantum computer. So uh, a few years later, we checked out whether you can actually get quantum advantage using that model. This was Will, Will, this is Will Zeng, then was my student, and he's now the head of quantum at Goldman Sachs. Uh, so he came up with quantum advantage. Uh, few, we still had to wait for the quantum computers to become big enough to do anything. Uh, so we did this in around 2020 for the first time. We did quantum natural language processing on quantum computers. And we made it a bit bigger. And now you can do it yourself. Because we made all our software available and made it very easy accessible that so anybody anybody can now start playing around. So, so this got some attention in the media uh, to, because we actually sort of, <coughs> in a very useful, friendly way, gave everyone in the world who wants to the ability to now sort of do some, some basic natural language processing with a quantum computer. Uh, let me move further. <coughs> Sorry about it. I just had lunch and something's in my throat. So let me go a bit further. The way it goes is like um, what you see here, it, it looks a little bit like what I was presenting at quantum teleportation, but you can also think of this as an algorithm that produces the meaning of a sentence when you know the meaning of the words and its, uh, and its grammatical structure. So the very simple principle here is that, and I click again, up. So that, that the top part, the top part are the meaning of the words and the bottom part are the grammatical structures. And now we can start using, so this, this was our initial algorithm. And now 
We can start using spiders to do all kinds of stuff. I'm going to be very quickly, but we transform the sentence in a quantum circuit. Here we are. Now we have a quantum circuit. And that's what our software tool called Lambeck, it's called Lambeck after the person who in 2005, McGill told me that teleportation was grammar. Uh, so this is, this is what Lambeck does for you. You type in a sentence and then it produces the quantum circuit that gets immediately compiled so you can actually put it on a quantum computer. Uh, so it, 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 it's kind of a nice inclusive thing because everybody, everybody can play around with this. Uh, then we do some machine learning, some optimization, and then we get there. Uh, I'm a bit, so like I say, we, we are still further developing it. Everybody can follow. Um, so... I mean, here's here my talk, and now I know this is a quantum optics, um, uh, this is an optics kind of conference. So at the moment, but we haven't got that, we, got that, we haven't got much material out. We're actually now coming up with um, diagrammatic language specifically for quantum optics. There is one paper you can already find on the archive by myself and Giovanni de Felice, which shows how you can actually compile quantum circuits and other quantum programming languages into optics, it's, which is a non-trivial process. And it's exactly what certain companies, let me go back, let me go back to, to, to a previous slide. Oh, oh, let me go back to all these companies. Where are your companies? I'll have to go a bit back. So you see here uh, in the, Second row on top, you see two companies, Psy, Psy Quantum and Quandela, which we are now working with. And these are companies who are working towards optical quantum computing. So they're starting to build components for an optical quantum computer. And we're working directly with them to provide these sort of diagrammatic languages because it's virtually impossible, given the quantum computing paradigms which they use, to use a standard language of quantum mechanics. So here, here this diagrammatic language is much more useful than really anywhere else. Um, so, so the reason for that is that a lot of this optical quantum computing doesn't use circuits, but uses something which is called measurement-based quantum computing. You prepare a big entangled state, and then you just measure. You measure, 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 and that's how you do your computation, just by measuring. That's becoming the standard uh, paradigm now for optical quantum computing. And hopefully in a year or so, or so we can say a lot more about that in this collaboration with these two major companies. Thank you, I'll stop here.